What's up YouTube? Today we have a 2008 Honda Civic EX uh, without the premium sound. We're going to be putting in a radio. We're going to be doing a backup camera. Uh, eventually we'll be adding substance to this car, but right now it's just a backup camera and a radio. Let me show you where I'm at so far. So, I took it upon myself to find the best backup camera for this vehicle. So we have two that are kind of like so. Come on. Where they're the cover for the brake light and then they come down so let me show you that right now so um, first you're gonna need to pop this back piece off and what I mean by that back piece is that right there you'll pop that off and here's the brake light cover so these these go on like so and hang out the bottom like this one does this one looks like it's the one we're gonna go with but what I'm worried about is Nighttime, so this has the IR uh, uh, sensors, lights, whatever you want to call them, on here, so I know this will work in the nighttime. And then I actually have a couple other cameras here. So I have this Natika WDO11, uh, and this is like a universal one. You can see. And then I have another bullet one that looks just like that. So I'm still trying to figure out which camera we're going to use. I want the best picture a customer asked for. That's currently where I'm at guys. I'm just just getting started. All I did was pop that off. I'll walk you through it with me. I just wanted to, you know, introduce you guys to the car and show you what we're gonna be doing. But as always, make sure you give the video a like. It's, you know, all my research and stuff. And again, guys, make sure you subscribe. Always looking at Honda's Acura's on this channel. Always coming up with ideas. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell or whatever the hell it is so that you get notified when the videos come out. All right, guys, let's get started with this. Here's everything that's going in the car. Um, we'll start right to left. So first thing is always your dash kit or your trim piece, whatever you want to call it. You have to make sure this one matches the color of your car. So there are different SKUs, and here are the different colors. Here are the different numbers. I recommend the Skosh because it's just a little seated back enough so that the glare of the sun doesn't hit the radio directly compared to the metro kit um, just that little bit of overhead really helps so i recommend this just make sure you buy the right color and of course we have our steering wheel interface the asc w1 you know our control for this put this over here then this is an item that we don't normally um, use in our installs but this is a dual usb extension so we're gonna be running this from the radio underneath the center console to the center um, cigarette lighter we're gonna be replacing that with this and that's where they'll connect for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto next we have our antenna adapter which is just an uh, HD 10 we have our microphone for hands-free we have our GPS antenna this is an 8100 NEX at this time you could probably buy one with all this for about 500 to 450 or 450 to 500 uh, so you know if you want to score yourself a deal look for a separate unit just verify it works then you can pick up these accessories they sell them in packs on eBay for a hundred bucks but if you separate them out you can uh, get it for cheaper but that's just a side note the next thing is our parking bypass um, then we have our uh, interface into the vehicle so here's our harness it's an a h a 10b or if you want to go with metro it's a 70 17 22 and the reason we got both it was just a coincidence we had both laying around but all right guys that's everything that's going into this car oh i almost forgot and then the backup camera obviously it's not here but this is the wiring for it um it's already in the car but i'll show you that but all right guys here's everything that's going into that car uh I'm gonna get everything wired up and then I'll show it to you. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, the easiest way, obviously you're gonna have to pop this trim panel off, but you can like pop just this side off and just by loosening this side and popping that one side off, you can maneuver this panel under here out because the way they bond is this one is underneath this one. But since we're gonna be doing the backup camera, we're gonna be adding a microphone in the right place. We want to just pop it all off because we're gonna be taking off a bunch of trim to get that backup camera and everything. Uh, but again, there are multiple ways to do this. The easiest way, pop this piece just slightly off, then you can get this out and do your radio install. Um, for the backup camera, we are gonna be tapping the backup wire 
it should be uh can i get you guys there should be underneath here somewhere i'll show it to you later um that's where we'll be tapping our reverse wire and then we're doing a parking brake bypass so you know you could use the radio whatever um but that's really it guys i'm gonna get started with that i'm gonna go take this off word of advice word of advice when you're working on any car you want to heat the car up first because you don't want any of the plastics to be cold and really brittle so make sure you let the car heat up once the car is hot and you're working on any panel whatever panel it is if it's not coming off with a pry tool with a thicker pry tool you may start with thinner one but once you get to something this thick and whatever you're doing isn't coming off make sure there are no screws look for screws always check it out watch another video figure it out because this had a screw right here and I could have easily damaged this car because I totally forgot about this screw and I was pulling. So just make sure that you don't do that. Verify for that screw. All this just popped right off, no problem. And then here was this one screw. To get that off, there's a panel here that you just pull down on. It's just held in with tabs. It'll come right down. Once you do that, you're able to take that piece off and now we can get started working on this piece. Again, make sure you let the car heat up. If you're pulling on something too hard, there's probably a screw or something else holding it down. So look at that first. Piece came out. Now all you have to do is pull at the top on this one and it should come out. And then, you know, like any radio installation, you have your wires back there. Uh, these harnesses here that you're just gonna have to pull out. Uh, and it's very easy, it's just a little pull tab at the top press that down and after your first set of plugs guys then there are these so you just want to get those again same method little tab on the side here press that down and just pull up you want to keep pressure off those harnesses from being pulled so just make sure you're holding this at a good angle where you could keep that pressure off here's your radio and here are the connections at the back of the radio so you could see you we're gonna have to reuse this vent and some other stuff here this uh i'll show you uh for the next kit all right guys so here i have them overlaid and i know the shadow that's on the table doesn't help a ton but i'll try to move it up um, but here you could see how close the colors are to the units so almost exactly the color that it's supposed to be it's just a little off but what's in it in the dash you don't have to worry the reason why i did want to show you this is because we have to reuse some components so we're going to be moving these we're going to be taking our button we're going to be taking this and we're going to be taking our vent and in order to do that you're just going to go one by one and start on doing screws so i'm going to start with our vent right here sorry right here right here and then another one down there and i'll do that first all right guys to get these off they're a little tricky you're gonna push really hard on the center of the button and hopefully that doesn't happen but these should just release the locking mechanism it's just uh pressure here we want to go. We're just going to clean these up a little. They're a little. So you're just going to press. Two. You want to align the grooves, guys. So there's three grooves down there. You want to match up. You want to make sure they match up with your three grooves. And there's a big groove. That's the one you want to locate first. And then, yep. Should just go right in. There you go. So again, our big groove. So once you find your if once you find those three grooves, you should be good again. And alright guys, this is what that panel looks like. Once it's done and ready, well, everything's transferred, all your buttons are there. It'll work. Now it's time to mount our radio. Here are the other, here's their instructions. Um, and then the adapters you're gonna need. 
And then as you can see, those things go down and they're supposed to help secure the radio. Alright guys, so here it is with the radio in and all the pieces transferred. Give you a few tips and something I want to mention that's going to be very big to you. First things first, you want to do your switches first, then put in your radio, then put in the vent because as you can see the vent gets in the way of where you would screw the radio in. Other thing I want to mention is you're going to need these screws. So the screws that come with the kit are for right here where this bracket mounts to the main chassis the screws that are on your the screws that are on your factory panel are too thick so they end up breaking the joints where they meet so you don't want to break those so you want to get thinner screws home depot has them or you might have them laying around these are the ones you're going to want and then everything else, you know, just cross, start, so start here, then go there, then go here, then up here, from here to work these down at the same time, for here, work these down at the same time. We're sitting in the vehicle testing out all our colors, and just to give you a heads up, you want to use the, the Metro 70 17 22, and the reason why you want to use this over the Skosh HA 10B it's because this comes with a lot of extra wires that you're not going to use, at least in this 2008 Honda Civic EX. It does come with a vehicle speed sensor wire if you're going to need that. It also comes with the wires for the integrated control unit of the car and a couple more wires that you won't necessarily use on an average install. So that's why I recommend the Metro. It gives you just the wires you're looking for, nothing else. And then for your steering wheel controls, since this is an EX, we have steering wheel controls. They're actually in here. But yeah guys, as you can see, this is time consuming. So why waste your time doing this when you could easily buy this plug and play harness from us directly and save yourself all this time. Everything will come wired for you to plug in your ASW1, plug into the car, plug in the steering wheel controls into the car, and plug everything right into your Pioneer. You don't have to worry about any of the wiring, making sure you match wires up, or waste your time putting all this together. All right guys, so right now we have our harness complete. We have our two connections. So in here is the factory aux input and you can retain that if you pin this correctly. But we're using this for the steering wheel controls. So pink and brown are your steering wheel controls here, positive and negative. Uh, so we didn't want to wiretap anything. So <clears throat> this is what we got. And right now we have our ASCW1 uh, plugged in. So we're gonna see if it auto picked up or if we have to reset it. Turn the key. And there it goes. So the green LED is on. We start the car. Now it's programming, so we're gonna hold volume up. So there's our controls. Again, look in our store for the wiring harness for this. It's coming soon. Everything ready, plug and play for your steering wheel controls. You don't have to worry about anything. All right, guys, I'm going to continue the install. I still got a bunch to do. I just wanted to show you kind of the wire harness and how it plays out. All right, guys, so we are now looking for a reverse trigger wire. Uh, it's going to be under here somewhere. I'll, I'll show it to you when I find it. It's a brown wire. It's very thin. have my voltmeter ready to make sure it is, you know, turn switch in 12 volts when we need it to. And then I have my pin tool, which is gonna allow me to stick it in there and actually make sure that I'm, I can touch it with my voltmeter. I'll let you guys know when I find it. All right guys, so we have the car apart. So we only wanted to run one wire up uh, this pillar and into the rear. So we're tapping our um, reverse wire uh, in the car up here so under the dash fuse panel I mean under the dashboard fuse panel is right here right above it you have these series of connections this one that's exposed this pin right here let's see if I can get you in there that pin right there right next to the yellow is the one you want to tap so that's gonna run down here 
and into here and here's where we're going to tap it and to get this off you're going to need to pop this off because it has a screw so this cover this cover you're going to work it from underneath there's a little tab where you're going to stick something in pop it off take that screw out and then you can start just lifting you might need a pry tool to get you started so once you lift up here you can lift this up and then there are pins here and here so you're going to push back and then up and out like so and that's how you'll get that loose now be careful because you will lose some of these um, retaining clips so you just want to make sure that you keep that one and that one they're in the car right now you just want to take them out and now I have to take off this piece this piece it's just two um, clips holding it on so if you get your trim panel removal tool just come in here and if you take this weather stripping off it'll make removing this panel a lot easier because you can just come in and pop it off like so now it is tricky you don't have to remove that you can if you want to but you can um, get your trim panel tool in here low enough where it can pop that panel off and you won't have to um, there's another one up here and then just like that that panel will come off here's the loom I was talking about here's where it's going to come down here they come together and then right here is where we're gonna tap so I'm gonna open this up to open this up you're just gonna take whatever a flathead whatever you can find come in here you get an angle you can see come in here lift this up and pull back at the same time as you're lifting up Ooh, it's tough to do with one hand but there's a tab there at the top you want to release that and pull back now you want to do all of them there's one two three four five after you do all five this will come loose and you can mess with the wires in here so once you get those all out you'll be able to show this wire all right guys so this is the brown uh gray wire we were looking for right there you can see i have a wire tap on it this is our reverse signal uh when i throw the car in reverse it gets 12 volts when i put it back into park or any other gear it goes away to get the bottom seat out there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt right there that you have to do and then you're going to pull up if you mess with a honda before it's just pull up that'll reveal this bolt once that bolt is off you can pull from the bottom and lift up because it's hooked onto here now you can put your seat down and you have access to all the wire looms that are coming from the trunk so you can properly run your wire so with the backup camera I'll put the link in the description but it's gonna go where your light bulb goes and then when you go to put it back on it's going to uh, have to go underneath that lip uh, so just be careful when you put it back on if it's no problem you just it's gonna be a little snug so you're gonna have to use a little bit of force and of course remember to put that 10 millimeter back that you took out earlier and now um, just snaking the wire along so yeah so that has an adapter for power and um, video what I'm doing is I'm gonna ground locally so I'm gonna ground in the trunk probably to one of the brake light grounds basically what I'm doing is I'm circumventing having to run another set of black and reds up I'm just gonna be running this one video cable alright guys so I'm done with that I'm gonna close this up uh, and then just another thing that I forgot to show on camera before is I ran the backup uh, video wire and then I opened this up and I threw it in here as well uh, just so that I have like a common place where all my wires are and it looks nice and neat so now I'm taking off the center console because I'm running the USB um, into here so to do that this will just pop off it's just clips you're just gonna uh, get your pry tool in there and then pop it off then you have a clip here's the uh, tab I was talking about or pin whatever you want to call it on and then there's one on the other side so it turns out to be four screws there's two there one uh, there the other there 
two inside the center console and then these pins and then it should just pull right out those screws are out the screws in here are out and then those two pins one in each uh, kick panel here and then on the other side are out you can now just pull this all the way back right after that you'll just pull straight back and up there is one connection there you have to disconnect because that will hold you up uh, it connects to right here you just want to get in there it's a little uh, push tab push the tab pull this back and then you're gonna pull back and up like the camera just moved to get it out now the whole reason we took this out was so we could install this and run this up to uh, the front of the all right guys there we are radios all in our mic is right there you can't really see it and then our steering wheel controls work then we have the Android Auto Apple CarPlay plug-in right there and then we actually ran an extra charger because we we're getting rid of this cigarette lighter we ended up using it underneath and just connecting like a permanent iPhone wire so that there's always a charger in the car we didn't retain the factory aux but you could have if you uh, through that adapter and then again this is a 8100 NEX so it has navigation Apple CarPlay all that good stuff before I go guys something I forgot to mention this uh, car is a rather simple install, but we will be selling a plug and play uh, kit for this car so you can retain the steering wheel controls, uh, your factory aux, and then just plug everything right in and um, you don't have to worry about wiring anything. And your amp's gonna uh, be beneath this seat. So just keep that in mind when you're gonna go upgrade. If you have an amp, just you're gonna have to bypass it or upgrade it wherever you wanna do. But most of the standard Civic, the LX doesn't have the same premium sound system. Even some EXs don't have it like this one. So just be aware of that. Uh, we'll have plug and play kits for both. Check our website. If you have any questions, feel free to send us a message, comment down below, and as always, like and subscribe. Thanks guys.